Have you ever had that problem with your Nintendo Switch where you're playing a game and your character just moves on its own and you didn't even press anything? Well, I have, and so has Henry, and it bloody sucks. Well, as it turns out, this is a problem which affects more people than first thought, and Nintendo might be facing a class action lawsuit because of it. Joy-Con drift is an issue which may affect up to as many as three quarters of all units, according to some reports. I have eight Joy-Cons and only two left ones don't drift. It's ridiculous. Had to buy a pro controller because of it, said Reddit user I'm Octopus Man. He was replying to a Reddit thread posted to the Nintendo subreddit highlighting the issue. The thread has almost 28,000 upvotes since last week. The issue which may sound like a minor irritation to many, actually impairs your gameplay experience to the point where you can no longer enjoy playing your game anymore. Well, that's what happened to me anyway. And as claimed by a US-based law firm, not only do Nintendo know about this defect, but they continue to sell the defective units anyway. Seattle-based law firm Chemicals, Swartz, Kreiner and Donaldson Smith are now in the process of filing a class action lawsuit over the matter. All US citizens who own a Joy-Con which quotes automatically register movement when the joystick is not being controlled by the user are being asked to reach out to the company via an online form and there's a link in the description if any of you are one of those people the nintendo switch is a very popular console having sold close to 35 million units since it launched just over two years ago although us owners may only account for a fraction of that 35 million overall switch sales that doesn't account for the sales of standalone joy-con kits which may increase that number significantly and while each individual claimant in the lawsuit may only recoup a small sum of money per single defective joy-con the damage to nintendo might well be more significant the company who have so far been riding a wave of switch success coming off the back of having failed so badly with the nintendo wii u have since responded to the news at nintendo we take great pride in creating quality products and we are continuously making improvements to them we are aware of recent reports that some joy-con controllers are not responsible correctly. We want our consumers to have fun with Nintendo Switch and if anything falls short of this goal we always encourage them to visit the website so we can help. The support page talks you through a recalibration of the analog stick which in my personal experience only fixes the issue briefly before returning. There's also the option of sending your defective Joy-Con back to Nintendo for a repair something which user Jose on Twitter has already done. I've sent my Joy-Cons twice for repairs. One came drifting out of the box and they're now acting up towards a third call it's a major inconvenience whatever comes of the lawsuit it's pretty shady of nintendo to still sell these things knowing which they most likely do that the defect rate is so high and considering a pair of joy cons retail at 65 pounds in the uk or 80 dollars in the us you would expect a more premium product for a premium price and with the switch lights coming in the autumn who knows if the same analog sticks will be used in those consoles with the controllers built into the switch light it's likely that the issue won't be as easily remedied as with the classic switch and if you ask me, it's time for Nintendo to own up and fix their shit. We expect a little better response than we are aware. It's just not good enough. The fact that 100% of the people polled in, in our office have experienced th this exact problem. It's a bit shady, right? I mean, I, I've had to quit playing the game because it's just like... Yeah. It's just too much. I can't. I can't play. I can't enjoy my game anymore. It was fine for the first X amount of months, and now it's just. It's just shit now, and it's like it's not good enough. Yeah, I've got four Joy Cons: two blue for the left, two right for the two red for the right, and it's both of the red ones that always don't cooperate with me. Wow, it's weird because my I've got the grey ones, and the one on my left is the is the culprit, and it's extraordinary. It's so high, and they're selling these defective products. Obviously, there's an issue with them for sixty five quid. What the f is that? Like, I thought it was just me, right? And then it comes out a few months after I started having the problem that a lot of people are having it. There's the article in Kotaku, and then the, like a week later, this whole lawsuit's kicked up. I want a lawsuit in the UK. That's yeah. what I want. Yeah. It's a shame that we can't apply for it. But like like we said, anyone who is experiencing this here's in the US and wants to add their weight to this class action lawsuit, you might only get a few dollars from it, but it will kick Nintendo in the arse and get them to fix their shit, which they need to do. And now after their week-long absence, it's the triumphant return of the Daily News Nuggets. I bet you were starving a whole week without nuggets. What have you been doing?
What have been eating? Chewing the furniture. After several months of being dragged through the mud for all of its problems, it looks like Anthem may finally be getting its highly touted Cataclysm event. Anthem players, yes, apparently they do still exist, have been met with three new challenges, one of which is named the Oncoming Storm, and seems to suggest something significant is about to happen in the game. The event was announced back in May and is expected to arrive imminently. Star Citizen has a new update. Version Alpha 3.6 is now live and introduces a new law system System, which will bring consequences for your actions as well as a black market for illegal items. There's also the addition of new locations, ships and stations to keep players busy while they're waiting for the game to finally actually launch. The original Red Dead Redemption from 2010 was a fantastic game topped off with the excellent Undead Nightmare DLC. There are currently several rumours floating around the internet that an alien themed event and a full remake of the original game will be coming to Red Dead Redemption 2. Now I hope that hasn't excited you too much because it turns out that both rumours were posted to Reddit by a random user and are totally bogus. The official box art for the much anticipated, although little known, Death Stranding has been revealed. We can see the standard version featuring Norman Reedus's Sam Porter Bridges in his default outfit, while the Steelbook version depicts a similar image, albeit with Sam being much grubbier. And for an infamously enigmatic game with one of the industry's most admired creators, we can't help but feel that these box arts seem pretty uninspired. While on the topic of Death Stranding, game director Hideo Kojima has been taking shots at Fortnite and the Battle Royale genre. Speaking at Comic-Con, he said the easiest way to make money is to make a game where everyone is on an island trying to shoot each other. I don't want to make that. So while we don't know what will be in Death Stranding, we do know that it won't feature a Battle Royale mode can't say that I'm disappointed. Since it launched last year, Marvel's Spider-Man has quickly become the best-selling superhero game of all time in the US. Matt Piscatella of the MPD Group shared a chart of the top 10 on Twitter recently, which shows Batman Arkham City and Arkham Knight pushed to second and third respectively. No one really knows when the Final Fantasy VII Remake will be fully out, but players in the Dreams beta have tried their hands at recreating it themselves. The gameplay shows off Cloud, Barrett and Tifa tackling one of the game's bosses with full animations, UI, hit markers and particle effects. So I guess if you want something done right, just do it yourself. Everyone's favourite Witcher production, the Witcher Netflix series, got a first trailer. The trailer which is dark and gritty isn't half bad actually. It raises some hope that the show might actually be decent despite receiving heavy criticism recently over casting. We still don't have a release date for the show yet but it is expected sometime this year. Overwatch is getting another new hero. Sigma will be the game 31st character who is described as an eccentric astrophysicist. Blizzard have released a two minute origin story video for the hero who will apparently allow you to manipulate gravity. And Green Man Gaming's Summer Sale is here and thankfully it's not as complicated as the Steam Summer Sale was. Some of our highlights include Monster Hunter World for just £22.50, that's a 55% saving, No Man's Sky for £17 which will save you 57% and Resident Evil 2 Remastered for £26.72 which which is a 41% off. All these games and more, plus you get a bonus with every single purchase. Some offers are as good as buy one game, get five free. Throughout the sale, all customers will be entered into a draw to win an Intel NUC compact PC and a bundle of games. And on top of that, new customers can claim an extra 15% discount by using the code HELLO15 and using our referral link in the top of the description below. Now that is a summer sale worth racing for. So proud of that. Get one. it? <laughs> worth race. It's worth. It's worth racing for that. Green Man Gaming is actually one of the most respected games sales store on digital stores. Um, like out there I've used it before many people use it before some of the lowest prices in PC games anywhere and that's without the sale usually so we're, we're quite proud to be an affiliate now so if you want to get your 15 percent off right hello 15 as a discount code use our referral link in the top of the description helps the channel out as well you don't even have to click like anymore you can just click the green man gaming thing and and buy some and get some awesome cheap games in the summer sale and get buy one get five free. i mean why, why wouldn't you want to race to that? So that is it for your Tuesday news nuggets. Make sure to check the description below to find all of the links to all the stories we've covered today, as well as that all-important Green Man Gaming referral affiliate link thing. But now it's time again for the return of the bad dad joke. Gaz, what have you got for us? And the dad jokes come from the PGG Discord, which you can get access to from a little, little as $1 a month if you support the channel over at 
patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming you get access to the podcast a few days early as well as to the discord we can read all the awesome bad dad jokes and today's dad bad dad joke comes in from tons this is this is awesome it's been it's been a week they've been collecting and this is the best of the bunch i reckon right you ready what happened to the guy who had a fetish for population statistics he finally came to his census <laughs> wow <laughs> I love it. That's a classic. It's just dad a spin. Joke, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Fuck, it's, it's a, beautiful. Thanks very much. Thanks for your part. Oh, beautiful. Back at E3, Square Enix and the folks behind the upcoming Marvel's Avengers game were criticised for not showing off actual real-time gameplay to the public or to fans back home. The development teams from Crystal Dynamics and Idos Montreal were also at San Diego Comic Con over the weekend and were met with the same criticism. But it looks like someone has been quietly doing God's work and has captured some gameplay footage from the show. The footage takes the form of a phone camera recording of a screen at the event, so the quality is only about as good as you would expect. But we can see gameplay of the five main characters, Captain America, Iron Man, Black Widow, Hulk and Thor. We see Thor hacking and slashing, which looks just like Kratos in 2018's God of War, Iron Man shows off a flying sequence similar to what we all wished Anthem was, and we see Bruce Banner leaping from a Quinjet before transforming into the Hulk and smashing enemies just like he did to Loki in the Avengers. We also see Captain America flinging his shield and comboing enemies hand to hand on the helicarrier before finally getting a fairly brief look at Black Widow in a set piece with Taskmaster. Elsewhere in the footage, we see a character closely resembling Kamala Khan, aka the polymorphing inhuman Ms. Marvel. In addition to the gameplay leak, we also got another leak showing some alternate character costumes. We can see a couple of looks for Cap, one featuring the traditional scale armor and one possibly resembling the Falcon's time with the shield, as well as some alternate belt and bracer designs for Widow. We also catch a glimpse of a Viking version of Thor and a more armored variant, a Joe Fix it inspired look for the Hulk and one featuring a beard and war paint and a version of the Mark 42 armor for Iron Man. The devs have confirmed that gameplay footage will be released to the public after Gamescom in August. But ultimately, all this just begs the question, why not just show it to the public now? Now this directly links to exactly what we talked about in yesterday's video, which is all the secrecy around the games industry. And it's the biggest complaint about E3 this year is that loads of games were shown off, but no actual gameplay. It was just fancy, you know, pre-rendered uh, trailers and whatnot. I can't say that I'm a fan of this. I cannot say that I'm in favor of this at all. I, you think if they'd have done this for Cyberpunk, I'd been good. Mm. Like I, I want to experience it the way that the devs want me to experience yeah it, right and and this all right you get your information oh I, you know yeah i really want to see thor doing this i really want to see iron man doing that i get that but at the same time wouldn't you rather just experience it as it is like then people who like spoilers for shows who yeah it's like like who who wants to spoil a show don't Pe spoil it for yourself yeah anytime a new like big blockbuster movie comes out you'll see in the top searches like avengers spoilers yeah. so people can then just run around and tell everyone what's the freaking point i mean i i'm not in favor of this and i don't know is it shoddy journalism of us for, show, for showing that? Well, that's the question we talked about uh, yeah. yesterday right? yeah i mean if you're interested in the discussion around spoilers and secrets and stuff like that check out yesterday's video it's a quite interesting discussion the thing is i don't like leaks like this because you're right i like to see the way the devs wanted it because they're showing it for a specific reason yeah but at the same time what i have seen i do quite like i like the look of and i am keen to see more when we actually when they actually reveal it after gamescom which is in like late august it's like 20 to 24th of august yeah. so it's not too long to wait really yeah and the reason that they withhold this from the general public is because they build the anticipation they build the hype they build the they build people's desire to see it and that's, that's exactly what they did with cyberpunk 2077 which worked so well for them it catapulted that game the last two years has been like the highlight of e3 because of the way that they they deal with the, uh, you know, the trailers showing off to a very select amount of journalists before they release it to the public after Gamescom. It works. It seems to be a, a great strategy. That's why they do it. So, um, you know, more power to them. And one of these leaks got over a million views, and that's a million views that could have gone to uh, Square Enix's channel. So that's it for your Tuesday roundup and the return of the nuggets and the bad dad jokes and all that. Make and sure my face. Oh, I mean, who really cares? It was the return of my face. You've just been hearing my voice. Yeah. So uh, bad luck for you. Make sure you check the description below for all the links to all the stories we've covered today and our Green Man Gaming affiliate link. If you like what you see, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. You know what to do. If you want to help us create the content we've been making, go on over to patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming. As we said, you'll get access to the podcast and the discord channel it's all great fun i've been henry he's been gaz we'll see you next time bye for now
Foom, what the fuck, man? You can tell I'm not red. I'm yeah. fucking weak. <laughs> First thing that popped into my head was like, oh, that's a, a race crime I can get behind. And I was like, that's just not going to come out right, no matter how clever I'm glad I, I, I try wrote, and do I'm this. glad I wrote that segment. Yeah. <laughs>